that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The love of God, God is love, is met in a particular place, on a particular time in history, on a hill called Golgotha, Calvary, where Jesus Christ suffered and died and shed his blood. According to Acts 20:28, 20, that blood being God's blood was shed because you are a sinner. <clears throat> For the wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you are a sinner. You are a sinner, so you're going to die. And God, knowing that, and knowing that you cannot do nothing or anything or absolutely nothing, can you do for your sin condition? Your sin has given you a terminal disease that will kill you. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none that doeth right. No, not one. I am talking to a bunch of people that one day you will take your last breath. You will not handle produce anymore. You will not touch money. You won't talk. You will die. And without Jesus Christ, you will die in your sin. You are hearing the gospel at this moment that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scripture with over 400 people that witnessed the event. The resurrected Christ. Now why did Jesus go to that cross? Why did he come out of that grave? Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You can't take away your sin, and no one else can take away their sin. Never mind a priest that can take away people's sins, he can't even take care of his own sin. Ladies and gentlemen of Daytona Beach Farmers Market, we've got a condition called sin. One lie makes you a sinner. Hi, boss. I am feeling sick today. Can't go to work. Sorry. That's a lie. You are now a sinner. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 28, in this great place called Daytona Beach, if a man looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, he has already committed adultery with him. With a vast beach of bras and panties,
in your adulterated mind, just looking made you an adulterer. You are now a sinner. Have you ever taken anything? Have you ever taken someone's pen that was not yours? You are now a thief. You are a sinner. Now what do you do with your sins? You can die in your sins and end up in a place called hell. Where for all eternity you can pay for your sin. I hope your beer and your drugs are well because that's what you're going to pay for in hell. Go for the gusto. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you shall burn in hell for all eternity. Or, the Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You can have your sins removed. You can have your sins cleansed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Oh, in our church, we don't preach hell. Then what are you going to be saved from? What is the penalty? What is the crisis? What is the condemnation if there is no hell? Listen, people. Wait for the motorcycle to go by, he's a little loud. Listen, people. When I go to heaven, I don't want to be in heaven with a bunch of sinners like you. You ruin the world. And if everybody will be saved in the end, and all will go to heaven, that includes Adolf Hitler, Mason, Every sex pervert, every child molester, that's the kind of heaven you want, you keep it. I want to go to a place where God and Jesus Christ are honored upon the cross and upon the empty tomb. See, I'm a sinner today, but I'm a saved sinner. I am sorry and repent of my sins. I don't lavish in my sins. Like some people do. I don't go marching down the street enjoying sodomy as some people profess that they are Christians and enjoy. And when the Bible says that's an abomination. Look around you. Sin is all around you. You're not getting your money's worth here by everybody here. There are people around here claim to be homeless, and they're not. When you go to work, you're not getting the true value of what you work for. Sin is all around us. And God lumped those sins into ten categories. You are a sinner. You will die because you are a sinner. You've got to take care of your sins before you die. The wages of sin is death. And when you take your last breath and you've done nothing about your sins but sin more, the Bible says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, adultery will not put you into hell. Adultery will make you a sinner. Stealing will not put you into hell. Stealing will make you a sinner. Lying 
will make you a sinner. Well, then how does sin put you into hell? When you reject the sin offering that God has given to you, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you tell Jesus Christ, I don't want your offering, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And when you die in those sins not washed by God, you will go to hell. Now, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus for what He has done for you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Man will tell you to go to hell. We're here to prevent you from going. And we tell you how not to go to hell. By Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus speaking. Without Jesus Christ, the God of creation that made you, will cast your body and your soul into hell because you have rejected Jesus Christ, His Son. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. But for you that choose to reject The Bible speaks about tormenting, tormented, being in torment. Because you're all rejecting of Jesus Christ. Now let me go back and finish that verse. Because I've been quoting half a verse to you. I don't want to be a part of a religion and just quote part of the verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you can die in your sins and burn in hell, or you can receive God's gift and be saved, and when you die, be absent from the body and present with the Lord. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son because you have a need. There is something you cannot do. You cannot save yourself. If you think your works and your religion can save you to go to heaven, then why did Jesus do all He did? And what you're saying with your religion and your works is you are better than Jesus Christ who is sinless. You are mocking Jesus Christ with your religion and with your works. The Bible says no more about praying for dead. Once you're dead, you're dead. You die. You go off into eternity. You don't come back. That light at the end of the tunnel, you better turn around because it's a choo-choo-choo train going to kill you. Once you're dead, you're dead. I don't care what video games do. You've got a jello brain today with the, with the video games. You got morons out there walking around to find these little... Why don't you walk around and find Jesus Christ, eternal life? No batteries. No charging. Found in the Bible. King James 1611. 
And you've come out from being a zombie to being life. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that Jesus has been risen from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. To be saved from the wrath of God is believing on Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Notice I don't have an offering plate up here. I am not promoting my church. I'm promoting Jesus Christ. Born again, Bible-believing Christians are in heaven. Religions are in hell. The Pope can't save you. Only Jesus saves. Allah is disguised as Satan. He can't save you. Only Jesus saves. There are no Baptists in heaven, only born-again Bible-believing Christians. There are no newspapers in heaven, only the Word of God, Jesus said. And the Word of God tells you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Because the wages of sin is death. Being saved, getting saved, will not change. You will still die, Lord willing, unless the rapture happens. I'm not going to talk about the rapture. But salvation will not change the fact you're going to die. It just changes your eternal location from flames to glory. There is no ice cream in hell. Enjoy it now. There are those newspapers in hell. Read it now. You for sure will not find watermelons in hell. You won't find alcohol in hell. It burns up. Flame, fire, burns alcohol. Haven't you got the oxymoron yet? You won't be partying in hell because of the fire. You'll be screaming in agony. And yet, God made hell for Satan and his angels, and he will put you in there for rejecting Jesus Christ, but yet, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God does not want you to go to hell. And God said, hey, you with the loud mouth, Get down there and tell them about the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins. According to the scripture, he was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scripture. Tell them there is hope before they die. But if they die without Christ, you are hopeless. The Bible speaks about after death, there are two places to go, two places only. <coughs> you can go to heaven by Jesus Christ, or without Jesus Christ, you can go to hell. And I'm not telling you that. God told you that. Imagine God Almighty telling you to go to hell. Don't believe me? I knew you wouldn't believe me. Revelation 20. I'll quote the chapter and verse. Revelation 20, verse 14. God telling a man to go to hell. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Why? Because you have rejected Jesus Christ as your sin atonement. Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Pills can't do it. Religion cannot remove your sin. Matter of fact, if you go to religion, you are 
happens more and more and more. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. No one comes to the Father but by me. See, he didn't say the church will get to the Father. He didn't say good people get. The Bible says there is none good. You get to the Father by Jesus Christ, not Simon Peter. Mary cannot do anything for you. Marrying multiple wives makes you a polygamist, not salvation. Selling your magazines and denying Jesus is God, you will burn in hell. And that's the truth. That is the biblical truth. See, this is not about Easter Bunny and Santa Clauses. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about God reaching down to you as a sinner and saying, I have the way for you, and you are saying, no. You're just like a disobedient child. And God is into chastisement. And if you reject what God has given you, your chastisement will be the burning hell. What a punishment. And yet, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Again, saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God. John chapter 3. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That wrath of God is a lake of fire. It's hell. What's the wrath? You rejected Jesus Christ, His Son. And you got to be careful, people, because in the Bible says that there are other Jesuses. You better make sure you have the biblical God sent, who is God, Jesus. You better not have the fairy tale Jesus of the world. You better not have a Jesus as a prophet. You better have the Jesus that died for your sin. You better have the, Je have the Jesus that was buried. And you better have the Jesus that arose the third day. And you better have the Jesus that's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. Because if your Jesus is still nailed to the cross, that Jesus is a liar. That Jesus is Satan. Because he is not on the cross. He's in heaven working down right now. My Savior came off the cross, went into the grave, and came out of the tomb, and witnessed himself to over 400 people. If you're Jesus on the cross, he is stupid. He can't do nothing. He has no power being nailed to the cross. And between your chest, that Jesus is a lying, devilish, satanic Jesus. Came out of the grave. That Jesus is still nailed on the cross is a religion. And Mary, his mother, can't do nothing. I was going to go somewhere and I forgot where I was going to go. Acts 20, 28. So you got to realize that there are other Jesuses. Acts 20, 28. I'm going to read the last part of this verse. I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to read the whole verse. 
The beginning of this verse is written to pastors. Ah, I'll read it. Some pastors out there are unsaved, the Bible says. I'll read it. Take heed therefore unto yourselves to feed, or excuse me, take heed unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Now there's a Jesus out there that comes to your door and says that Jesus is not God. Now Jesus died upon the cross. He shed his blood upon the cross. When they drive nails into you, you're going to bleed, no matter who you are. Anybody ever smack their thumb with a, with a hammer? You're going to bleed. Now, when they nail Jesus, which is a historical fact, when they nail Jesus to that cross, he bled. Acts 20.28 20, said that that blood is God's blood. I just shot down another religion. The Jesus that you are to turn to and to believe is Jesus that is God, that shed His blood, that was sinless, and that took your atonement for sin on that tree. you got to be careful. There are other Jesuses out there. There was a Jesus out there that gave you Kool-Aid. That didn't do you too good. There's a Jesus that was in Texas that married a whole bunch of wives. That didn't do no good. But the Jesus that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son... For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The biblical Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, and He is God. I'm ashamed to say to, to some of you here, even through a Baptist church, that you think you're saved and you're not. You got a television Jesus. And the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You may have a Jesus, I just said this prayer and that don't work. There's a Jesus coming up in churches now, knick-knack, paddy-whack, give the kid a treat and he gets saved. That doesn't work. Let me read to you Romans chapter 10. 9 or 10. If I can turn there. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, see, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart. Has to come from the heart. Not to get gummy bears. Not to get a ribbon. Not to make mommy happy. Not so the priest can say, look, another notch in my belt. Well, I'm hitting religions today. Shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. See, you've got to believe in the resurrected Jesus Christ. Now, how can you go to church and believe in Jesus who's still nailed to the cross? That's my religion I used to be in. I know what I'm talking about. I go to church and Jesus would be still on the cross. Never came down. That's not the resurrected Jesus Christ. 
It's a heart condition. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that's exactly what I'm doing now. Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You come over here, well, I'm a Christian, and you never open your mouth for Jesus. I call you into question, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. The Bible says a Christian will confess Jesus Christ. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. All is not well. There is a hell. And hell is hotter than Florida. Hell is the burning state. And there are no oranges, never mind frozen orange juice. You will burn, you will burn, you will burn, and you will burn more for all eternity. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Not just a prayer. Not a religion. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That Peter says the sinless, the sinless blood, the precious Lamb. Your sin sacrifice has to be bloody. And I'm not talking about Islam bloody. I'm talking about God the Father Jehovah bloody as in Acts 20:28, 20, when God shed his blood on Calvary's cross. Do you know what the difference is between Christianity and religion? Christianity is God shed his blood that you might be saved. Religion is when they shed your blood and die and meet Virginians. Thomas and all them. They think they're going to get virgins. They're going to find the founding fathers. Allah can't save. The Pope can't save. Only Jesus saves. And God is reaching out to you today. Now is the day of salvation. You may not have the rest of the day. There may be no tomorrow. You may take your last breath and wake up and say, Boy, that guy is right, but I can't do nothing about it. I wish I had listened to that preacher. By then it's too late. Come now. Come on. Step out. God has already come to you by giving His Son. God has already reached out to you. He wants you to take your part now. And He speaks from Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. He's speaking to you as come now. Let us. Not that let us. Let us. Reason together. Saith the Lord.
God is reaching out to you and saying, come on, come on, step out right now, let's get together, let's reason, let's open up the Bible and find out what God expects from you. Let's shoot down your belief, let's shoot down your religion, and let's show you the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. You're going to die. And God does not want you to die and end up in hell. God is long-suffering. God is merciful. God is loving to send people like us to go to you and tell you what is expected. See, here is written instructions. The instructions are in black and white. But, God knows some of you are like me. I don't read the instructions. I start out with an entertainment center and end up with a coffee table. So God says, I know you're not going to read the instructions, so I will get a loud mouth preacher to read them to you. So here are the instructions of God being read to you that you can't say, I never knew. Because I want you to know how God wants you to be saved and go to heaven and not end up in hell. And a lot of you have Bibles at home. And they've never been opened, except for the fill in the family tree. Some of them probably still got the plastic wrapped on them. And here's the Bible being read to you right now. And God says, come now. Right now. I don't have the power to know when I or you will die. God says, get on that bed Saturday morning and go preach the word. He knows when your life is up, not me. And it may be today. You may never see tonight. And if you do see tomorrow, that's the long suffering of God for you to take the message that you heard today and apply it to your life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And God says, come now. Let us. I like that verse for this farmer's market. Let us. I've got the holy lettuce. From Isaiah 1.18. And God says, let us. Come together. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. The Bible says that Jesus spoke. You're to, you're to bring your little children unto Jesus. You're to bring your children to Jesus Christ for the saving grace. And if you don't, you'll give an account before God that gave you those children. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God says your sins are as scarlet, bright, noticeable. And yet, He can make them white as snow. Clean. Pure. It was like getting a wine stain on your outfit. Oh, look at that big stain. Oh, man, I spilled, I spilled something on my shirt. Uh, grape juice. Oh, man. And you go to religion. And they say, hey, religion, get this stain out of my shirt. And the priest grabs a keg of grape juice and dumps it over your head and says, here, there's more 
Watson. Damn it, you're supposed to claim me. That religion can't. It just adds more to your sins. And yet you bring your sins to Calvary, to that cross where Christ died for your sins, and you can be washed, you can be lifted of those burdens of those sins. You got skeletons in the closet? Jesus can clean that closet. Now the reaping may still happen. You can be saved and put cigarettes away, but man, you may still get the cancer. But the sin is gone. The consequences, listen, I'm not going to tell you if you get saved and everything will be hunky-dory, wonderful, great, hallelujah, ten million dollars, I'll be a liar just like the television preachers. Salvation and believe in Jesus Christ will change your eternal destination. Salvation in Jesus Christ may get you more problems. How's that for being honest? Have you heard a television preacher tell you you could get into worse by believing in Jesus? And then I tell you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel is that I am told to preach to you. Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and arose again according to the Scriptures. You say, big mouth preacher, you keep saying that every week. I'm going to keep saying that to every week. And every week, as Lord is willing, as the Lord gives me mouth every week to come here with the gospel, that to the point that you get it in your heart, that you know it by memory. And I hope you can carry that to Jesus and say, that's what I believed on. Now, if you happen to be here, new at the Farmer's Market in Daytona Beach, we have a memory verse here. We have Acts 16.31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I hope you don't reject Jesus. I hope you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But if you don't, I can almost guarantee Acts 16.31 will be your condemnation at the great white throne judgment. When God will say, what did that preacher say? Acts 16.31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be, oops. See, we bring the word to life. We bring to you God. God is love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish. What do you do with things that perish? You throw it out. What does God do when you reject Jesus Christ? He'll throw you out. The Bible calls that cast out. Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. You are to bring your children to Jesus Christ, that they may be saved, have eternal life, eternal hope, the blessed hope, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, don't bring your children to Pokemon. Don't be pokey. Hurry up to Jesus. He will save. The treasure you're to find is found in Christ Jesus. Satan just has you just walking about. Moo, moo. You're just a cow off to the slaughterhouse.
What is the message of God to you? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Remember, you're going to die. That's not pleasant, but it's true. And I'm going to tell you something, too, about death. There's another biblical truth about death. And I have it in the Bible. Everyone in the graveyard today that's buried and dead are a Bible believer. But that doesn't stop the ones that are in hell already. Everyone in the graveyard believes on Jesus Christ. But that doesn't help those that are in hell. See, once you enter into hell, then you believe Jesus saves. He can't save you once you get into hell. God said, come now. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If I had a table here with beer and hot dogs and hamburgers and said, come now, then you'd knock me over. But if I say from the word of God, come now, And one day, if you reject Jesus Christ and continue to reject Him and never believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to wish you would be brought to this moment called now and believe, but you won't. The true love is that we are here trying to warn you. We really do care. A lot more than these people selling you stuff, all they want is your money. Grab a bag of fruit and tell them, I have no money. See what they'll do. And come to Jesus Christ with no money and see what he'll do. He'll save your soul. What if I knew that this bridge over here was blown up? It's gone. And I sat here and watched cars go into that river and people died. And laughed. I sit there and watch cars go over onto a bridge that's no more there. And I tell the police, yep, I knew that bridge was gone. And I said nothing. They ought to lock me up. And I'm telling you right now, when you die, the bridge to heaven is out. When you have not believed on Jesus Christ. Rejecting Jesus Christ, there is no bridge to heaven. There is a fall. And that fall is not into water, it's into the lake of fire. And I stand here to tell you the bridge is out for your lives. And the bridge of that death to heaven is Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Your end of your life is coming. And God said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.